Occultists around the world believe that once a symbol is created, it acquires power of its own, and that the more secret it is, the more power it has. They believe the greatest power of all is created in the symbol if the uninitiated never discovers that it even exists. This reminds us of the Jonathan Livingston Siegel phenomenon that I mentioned previously, where demons seem to assign themselves to positions created by men to be worshipped. So someone can create a symbol with the wicked intention that it should represent something diabolical, and then because of their motives in creating it, the symbol indeed takes on that power which has been imbued into it. It's nothing less than witchcraft. But if secrecy gives strength to the power of the symbols, they need to give them double meanings to help with the concealment. Albert Pike, a 19th century 33 degree mason, wrote an authoritative and infamous book revealing the secrets of the craft called Morals and Dogma. In it he writes, Masonry, like all the religions, all the mysteries, hermeticism and alchemy, conceals its secrets from all except the adepts and sages or the elect, and uses false explanations and misinterpretations of its symbols to mislead those who deserve only to be misled, to conceal the truth which it calls light from them and to draw them away from it. The adepts, sages or elect refers to those of the 33rd degree or above, the so-called illuminated ones. Morals and dogma was never intended for the eyes of the lower masons or the profane non-masons. The title page of the book asks that anyone in possession of a copy should return it to the lodge upon his withdrawal or death so that it would never reach a mass audience. Copies have, however, crept out of the lodges and its contents are available for public consumption. Albert Pike says of the symbols within Freemasonry, Part of the symbols are displayed there to the initiate, but he is intentionally misled by false interpretations. It is not intended that he shall understand them, but it is intended that he shall imagine he understands them. He then goes on to say, there must always be a commonplace interpretation for the mass of initiates of the symbols that are eloquent to the adepts. Here Pike clearly outlines that every occult symbol Freemasons use should have a false public meaning in order to keep the true darker meaning hidden. When non-Masons or even lower level Freemasons ask about doctrines or rituals, they will be misdirected with the false interpretation so as to keep them from the diabolical truth. It is only as they advance and prove themselves at the lower levels that the truth is gradually revealed to them. Like we have consistently seen, this system of double meanings is the very definition of the occult. Dark ideas and meanings concealed in full view through allegory and symbolism. With this in mind, take a look at this picture from the Grand Lodge of North Carolina. You should now be quite adept at interpreting these symbols. There's the sun representing Baal, there's the moon representing Asherah, an all-seeing eye above everything representing Lucifer. The rays coming from the eye signify that Lucifer claims to be the giver of enlightening knowledge. 33 degree mason Manley P. Hall explains of the all-seeing eye. The all-seeing eye symbolizes God, who is obeyed by the heavens, manifested in the heart and will reward the righteous. This symbol is famously represented on the US $1 bill and is depicted by an eye in the pyramid. The pyramid is incorporated in the symbol because God is the great architect. Now we know that the eye doesn't represent God at all but represents Lucifer and so that's a misdirection. You will also notice that the sun and moon are above columns. This is a new one but columns in Freemasonry represent gods. Therefore, this image in its entirety, which is replicated frequently in the craft, shows a sun god, a moon goddess, and above and behind them all is Lucifer. Columns are also phallic symbols. Albert Mackey, 33 degree Freemason, writes, The phallus was an imitation of the male generative organ. It was represented usually by a column, was surrounded by a circle at the base. The circle at the base represents the female vulva and therefore inserting the upright column into the circle makes it a sexual symbol and that brings us back to this symbol we looked at earlier. An article in a Masonic bulletin says, the female principle symbolized by the moon assumed the form of a lunette or crescent while the male principle symbolized by the sun assumed the form of the lingam and placed himself erect in the center of the lunette like the mast of a ship. Remember the mast and ship symbol from Catholicism. There are so many ways to express this exact same idea. 
We saw earlier that the obelisk outside the Vatican made this point and circle symbol from the air, but you will find these obelisks or Asherah poles literally all over the world. The most imposing and important ones are to be found in the major cities or power bases and financial capitals, but wherever you live, you will probably not have to go far to find one close to you. This obelisk is from London, and this one is from Paris, and this one is from New York. And these were all taken directly from Egypt and rebuilt in their new locations in the 19th century. The London and New York obelisks are a pair, while the twin of the Paris obelisk is still in Egypt. You'll find them on every continent, in democracies and autocracies, in nations of all political persuasions. You'll find them in major capitals, in financial centres, and probably near seats of government and power, but also in the farthest flung and most remote areas of a country. You'll find them in your local parks, in your local graveyards. They are all pervasive around the world and are nothing but sexual symbols representing the satanic sun god, Baal. During the summer of 2009, while still researching the series, I visited the Wallace Monument in Stirling, Scotland, and suspected just from its design that a Freemason may have been involved. These suspicions were quickly confirmed. It was in fact designed by a Freemason. Now obviously it could be argued that most towering buildings today are column shaped, so a level of common sense must be employed. Not every skyscraper was designed to be a hidden symbol. However, you will find that wherever Freemasons have been involved, sexual connotations are no accident. You will also see obelisks very frequently in graveyards. Often they are for deceased Freemasons, but again, this is not always the case. It appears to have just become the fashion for some, and many may have picked them without realising their origin. Remember the recurring mountain theme from earlier also. Satan likes to claim the high points in his bid to become the most high. With that knowledge, I looked for the high points in Scotland's capital city, Edinburgh, to see if there was an obelisk present. Sure enough, on Carlton Hill, there is a significant one that gives views over the whole city. Notably, it is within easy view of the Scottish Parliament, the castle and other traditional strongholds of power. As the King of Tyre wants to control the Prince of Tyre, the human governors and rulers, you will often find the symbolism within range of governmental buildings or financial centres. There is also a theory that these monuments are built along ley lines, ley lines being geometric lines that run along landscapes, connecting ancient or secret features together. The idea is that they are channels along which energy can flow between points. It might be an interesting experiment if you were to find the high points within your own area and check for obelisks. If there are no obelisks, you may instead find stone circles or other deliberately designed shapes. Alternatively, look for the seats of power, influence and financial centres, then check for any obelisks or occult symbols that are overlooking those buildings. Perhaps survey the geometry, degrees and angles at which the obelisk stands to those buildings. You may see physical evidence of satanic influence over government leaders in this way. I know for sure that the local high point in my town often has a stone circle made out of rocks, and if you move them and go back later, they'll have been rearranged back into a stone circle again. Have a look and see what you find.